so I mentioned to Zane, we need to go hunting. We need to go hunting sometime. With you. And, and, and he had a place that uh, the guy owned the place uh, that he worked with. He, anyway, he said, uh, he said, well, he never invited us, and I've never really been here hunting. And so uh, I said, well, look, buddy. He said, you get us to go to the hunting place. I said, I will get you set up to go deer hunting. I will outfit you, and we'll get going. So just get us there. So after about four or five years, we had an opportunity to go. Now, when, I, when Zane said we're going, I, he said, well, he didn't have anything. And I said, well, look, don't you worry. And I did. I outfit him. I had. I got his coveralls. I got his his boots, and uh, I just had him, and his orange, and his gun, and, and got my son's gun, and just and had him all rigged up, ready to go, so we met at a dock. Now, guys, we're, you know, we're going to be hunting over near Demopolis, Alabama, up at a place called Rattlesnake Bend, which is near Portland, Alabama, for those listeners that know where that is. Oh, yes, sir, You'll be, so, you're, uh, you're live in, in Demopolis as we speak. Oh, wow, I, well, I didn't realize that. That's great, <laughs> that even makes it better. Uh, so anyway, so we went down there at the marina, and uh, so everybody knows there where the office marina is. And so we met all down there and got in a boat that, that was uh, stationed there with our friends. And so we headed up the river, and so I had a, uh, you know, for deer hunters that are trying to explain to someone uh, how to shoot a deer, but they've never been, we've never been target practicing, we've never talked about it, it's the first time doing I got an old brown paper bag and I, and I had a pencil, <laughs> and so <laughs> and so I said, "Now Zane, I'm gonna draw a deer right here." And and for you deer hunters, you know the easiest shots are broadside. So I told him that we need to do a broadside shot. So I drew a little picture of a deer, and right there at the top of the leg and halfway up his body, I said, "Just put just put the bullet right there." And said he's going down, and that's what you got to do. Now you got to remember, guys. This is 1996, and in 1996, you couldn't kill those. It was illegal back then. Right. So we made sure we explained the thing that you know, do not shoot any does, and only shoot bucks. Only bucks, no does. No does, only and bucks. So, Did you get that thing? Absolutely, I followed. Crystal those clear. Absolutely, okay. clear right. as crystal. Right. <laughs> and so, so we got the instructions clear, and on where to <laughs> shoot the deer. Well, a buddy of mine, you know, like I said, I got a little gray hair, but back then I used to like to climb, climb the, you know, 40, 50 foot up in the tree. So my buddy and I, <laughs> we went back in the woods. It was an afternoon hunt. So we get there in the afternoon, but we said, you know, Zane's first hunt, we better put him on this 12th ladder stand <laughs> closest to the boat. We don't want him to get lost, and we don't want him to get hurt. Right. <clears throat> now, <laughs> this is... This is where Rex makes me look retarded. I love this part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just by, so we're just practicing safety. Just practicing right. Safety. Right. Yeah, safety is first, you know. Safety's yes, always That's first. Right. That's right. It's the truth so far, is not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll we'll get the we'll get the record completely straight when you get done. <laughs> Go ahead. So we climb on up in the trees about 40 foot in that afternoon hot. So about 4 o'clock, I heard this, that boom thud, that boom thud. You know that thud, the one that, that you know has been hit. And so I said, well, that sounds good. It sounded like Zane got him one, and I was excited for him. Right. So we time locked on. About 4.20, I heard another boom thud. And I said, well, that must have got up and been crawling or something. Mm-hmm. Well, evening came, and we climbed down. It was dark, and my buddy and I were coming out with a uh, flashlights and we saw a flashlight running toward us and, and sure enough it was Zane and he came up there and he said man said I have shot like a 16 point or an 18 point or something <laughs> said, I'm not really sure <laughs> I said, and so I turned to my buddy being at Zane's first hunt and hadn't really ever deer hunted before and, and me being a hunter he's never killed anything like what you got in the studio there but I said uh I, I turned to my buddy and kind of whispered, so I didn't want to hurt Zane Fields. I said, man, he shot like a six or an eight point, and he doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> but sure enough, he did know what he was doing because we walked up there, <laughs> and I shined a flashlight on that deer, and those horns, as you see in the studio, were everywhere. And I'd never seen anything like it, you know, and I didn't know at the time it was number 15 and non-typical 
uh, State of Alabama and number two Buckmasters that year for non typical. So I'm looking at this deer and I can't believe it. And then I look down at it and I don't see any blood. Wow. And I said, well, that's kind of strange. So I, and then I, and, and then I take the deer's front legs and I flip the deer over. There's no blood on the other side. I can't see where the deer has been shot. So I'm still studying the deer with my flashlight. <laughs> and I look into the front chest. I look at the front chest of the deer, and sure enough, there's a bullet hole right through the heart in the front of the deer. But the bullet never came out. And deer hunters know, you know, the bullet usually comes out the other side. But this one tumbled all the way through and never came out. And it was laid such that it didn't bleed out. So that's why it was no blood. And, but I knew that being shot through the heart like that, that uh, the deer had to fall. So I, I said, this deer fell right when you shot it. And Zane said, it sure did. So I looked at the deer, then I pointed this flashlight at the ladder stand, and it was directly behind the ladder stand, directly behind it. And I said, you mean tell me you shot this deer straight behind you? He said, yeah, I had to use, I had to use my opposite hand. Had to, it, on a barred gun, he never shot, shot the deer absent hand. <laughs> you know, opposite hand straight, I'm straight, looking straight at him. I mean, it was a perfect shot, and I'm going, you know, with a record buck, and I'm going, this is unbelievable, <laughs> unbelievable. Wow. And so, and so I'm sitting here thinking, and then, but then it dawned on me. I said, wait a minute, you shot twice. I said, I said, yeah. He said, I killed another one. I said, you killed, you can't kill two bucks in the state of Alabama. What are you doing, killing another one? And we walked over there. <laughs> And we looked at the flashlight, and, and it was a pencil spike. It was just a little bitty spike. I said, what in the world did you shoot this deer for after shooting the other one? And then Zane says, it looked like, buddy. He said, when we came up the river, you said, shoot bucks only, no does. I saw six does. This is the only two bucks I saw. <laughs> Did you ever believe, kind of taking the rookie Zane Hood back in the night, or late 1990s, that that on that hunt would have produced the number 15 non-typical book. As I'm holding this book right here in the studio, it says the Alabama record book for white-tailed deer. <laughs> I never would have believed it. I never. I promise you. I mean, I've been hunting all my life and still hunt and still have not killed anything quite like that or anything close to that. So, yeah, unbelievable. And by the way, it was easy to tell the story, you know, just tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the on a time. Like, yeah, it, it's, the story's never changed in 19 years, you know. It's, a, it's, it's just pretty uh, Go ahead. But before I give Zane the stage, Rex, seriously, on a timetable, from the time that you drew on a paper sack showing Zane how to shoot this deer, and then how much time's actually elapsed from that moment until he shot behind his back with the wrong hand and killed a 36 point buck. <laughs> it was like maybe three to four hours after that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. That's All right, right, Zane. No, I, Rex, nobody can tell that story like you do. And I ain't going to take a thing from it <laughs> because it's, it is true. I mean, not, I would say 98% of that is spot on. You know, I, I had, I had, uh, been on a few hunts before, but for all, practical purposes i was about as i think i had a blue jean jacket on that morning uh I and mean, a 12 gauge shotgun from what yeah, I, read. I had a 12 gauge with me rex was like here take my son's gun and, yeah. and he showed me how to load it. They, and the one thing you left out rex there was two bullets you gave me two bullets and i used them both you only got rex you gave him a barney fife only two bullets to shoot with that's right barney had one i had two so well you but, used both of them but Hey, I'm glad I didn't get in three. We may have three deer now. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. But, uh, you know, the one thing, Rex, that I always ask myself, and it's this always kind of hovers around in my head, is what if I'd missed that deer and nobody would have ever believed that you saw it, right? That I even saw it. That I, I mean, it was a very uh, surreal moment. And, I mean, Rex is right. That shot was. Uh, and I had, you know, I'd been in, served time in the military, was in the military. I mean, I'd shot plenty of guns. Right. But uh, it was, all I could see was his face and horns. I mean, it was, I just had to, you know, hope that I didn't blow his face off because of the angle that I was at. But, uh, but it, 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 it was a fun, fun moment, a great story. 
Uh, and I've heard Rex tell that story. Oh, it's times. so good. Well, the first time I heard it, I was just blown away yeah. at a dinner. Real quick, if you if you want to see what a 36-point boat looks like, you need to go to listentotheeagle.com, click on the state of Alabama, and click on Watch Live now, and you can see it live. And, and even later in the week, you can keep going there and, and, and click on the YouTube stream, and you can see it. Zane, since that day, and mm-hmm. I mean, when you're in a book like this, the Alabama record book of white-tailed deer on mm-hmm. the number, mm-hmm. you know, 15 – non-typical book i mean right. or do a lot of people do you get invited to shows and have you made any money off this deal? no no there, there was a lot of talk that i would have collectors calling me and yeah. people but you know there none of that's come to fruition and honestly it would it'd take a lot because that memory's worth a lot more than you know right. than a, than a few hundred dollars and uh it's just been a lot of fun uh and you know i did i had we were on the buckmaster show tv show several times was yeah. in their magazine a couple times, a strange buck contest. Won the big buck contest in Alabama several times. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, it's just it's fun. Well, have either one of you, and Rex, I'll go to you first. Have you ever had anything, any of your hunting adventures since that day, anything come some close situation. to something like and this, honestly, Rex? It would, it'd take- <laughs> well, a lot of hunting, hunting adventures, but I have to say this is uh, – it's the most incredible one for me personally. I tell you, I, I could, you know, we, we could talk deer stories all, but I don't think there's one in my life to top this. One. Zane, have you have you ever even come close to anything like this? I, I have, and I hunt, you know, pretty regularly now. You yeah, know, we 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 hunt and have a hunting club in Selma that we go to, and uh, but no, it, this is it, it tops it all. So sure does. Well, I I can't thank y'all enough for being a part of this and taking time out of both of y'all's busy schedule Mm -hmm. to be a part of listening to the Eagle Alabama. Rex, I've known you for quite a while. I love you. I I love what you stand for, not only the the great outdoors, but also the stance on on God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And thank you for being a part of of listening to the Eagle, Rex. I'm just thankful to be a part of it. Thank you, and Zane, good to be a part of guys like you. And I'm just glad God gave us a great outdoors to go and enjoy and thank you for what you're doing. Well, thank absolutely. You. Appreciate it so much. Thanks Zane, a lot, Rex. Yeah, thanks, Rex. Zane, th- I mean, you brought it to the studio. It, yeah. it, it's, I, I don't know that I can say that's a pretty deer. No, it's not. It, I mean, it's, it's, you can't say. It's an ugly deer, you know I mean? <laughs> it, it just let's call it what it is. And, my, and they really put a panel together, Bert, to, yeah. to score this deer. It was not one that uh, – they had to have five guys. Uh, Dennis Campbell, the guy that puts out that Alabama Whitetail Records, yeah. put a group of men together, and um, they had to have a panel to be able to score it. And they finally found, I don't know where, but they found a, a typical framework to start making measurements, and it ended up scoring 205 and 7 eighths. And it is, I have been stating it correctly. It is 36 points, right? Is that uh, correct? That is correct, yep. Wow. Correct. Well, I invite everybody to. I'm sure you can go online, but it's sitting right here in front of me, the Alabama Record Book of White-Tailed Deer, and it is, what, number 15? Number 15, non-typical. Yeah, right. that's just too cool. <laughs> so, Zane, you are. You're, you, I know you're an avid uh, hunter now, and, and you you got a hunting club, and, and you're from right here in Trustful. So yeah, absolutely. I, can, I can't thank you enough for coming here tonight and, and helping us, you know, to Zane – one of our stances before I let you go is we really want to introduce the youth to the outdoors to kind oh, of have yeah, that absolutely. first time experience. Right. Uh, I know we've told about mm-hmm. it wasn't your first time, but it, boy, it sure was a good time. Oh, that yeah. That big experience and something you'll never forget. And we just want to share that. So, absolutely. Thank you for being a part of the Hunt Club and taking youngsters fishing and everything You're that welcome. you stand for.